What's going on and welcome to the Solo Shot. My name is Tom Vecchio. We have a 13-game MLB slate tonight. Lock is set for 7.05. As always, this is one of the many shows on the FanDuel Podcast Network. You can find that anywhere, whether it's Apple Podcasts, whether it's Spotify, you name it. You can find the video version on the FanDuel YouTube page. You can find it on FanDuel TV Plus and you can find it on FanDuel.com slash watch. Make sure to give it a like, follow, or subscribe. Leave a review. That'd be greatly appreciated. And you can follow me on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio1. Before we hop into things, get ready for the NFL season with incredible offers from FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Plus, all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Now is the best time to join FanDuel. The app is easy to use, and you can bet on everything from spreads to player props and more. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. First online real money wager, only $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Uh, at seven days after receipt restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado. Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, or Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona. Call 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut. Call 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana. Call 1-800-522-4700 or visit KS Gambling Help in Kansas. Call 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghelp.org in Maryland. Visit 1-800-GAMBLER.NET in West Virginia. Call 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit GamblingHelplineMA.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts. Call 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in New York. NFL Sunday ticket offer ends 9-18-23. No refunds. Terms and embargoes apply 100 off NFL Sunday ticket, not YouTube TV. YouTube TV base plan required to watch. YouTube TV redemption requires a Google account and current form of payment. Commercial use excluded. All right, let's jump into this 13-game MLB slate. Obviously, much, much better compared to what we had yesterday. It was four games yesterday. Coors Field right now turned to only three games. We have uh, no real weather notes for tonight. I, I will say, as I mentioned yesterday, we're starting to see some cooler temperatures come through a number of cities. For example, the New York Mets are uh, going to be in the mid to upper 60s tonight, and we're going to see some wind blowing in at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. We already know that City Field is a solid pitcher's park. This is just a, an even further boost to pitchers. Uh, Cleveland, another cooler game in the 60s. Uh, I will say Kansas City should be around 80, which is actually one of the warmer spots. So kind of keep that in mind. And of course, we do have Coors Field on tonight's slate. Let's get to pitching. And with 13 games, we have a number of different options we can be considering. We are loaded when it comes to pitchers today. Justin Steele for the Chicago Cubs leads things off at $11,000. Jose Barrios from the Blue Jays is at 10.5. Zach Eflin from Tampa is at 10.3. Aaron Nola from Philly at 10.2. Tarek Skubal at 9.8 from Detroit. George Kirby from Seattle at 9.5. Seth Lugo from San Diego at 9.5. Logan Webb from San Francisco at 9.5. John Gray from Texas at 9.3. Bobby Miller from the Dodgers at 9.1. And Griffin Canning, from the Angels at 9,000. There are a number of options that are 9,000 and above. Of course, a few good options that are below 9,000, one of which we will get to. But let's start off, off up at the top with Justin Steele, one of the favorites to win the NL Cy Young. And he has been downright fantastic this season. He has gone 16 straight starts, allowing three earned runs or fewer. The last time he allowed more than three earned runs, was May 26th. May 26th was the last time he allowed more than three three earned runs. It was five earned runs against Cincinnati in 3.2 innings pitch. Since then, he's allowed three earned runs or fewer in every single start. He's not a massive strikeout pitcher. He only comes in with a 24.5% strikeout rate this season, which is slightly above the league average. It's just not as high as we see some uh, from some other pitchers on tonight's slate. He has a very low 5.1% walk rate, allowing 0.62 home runs per nine. He has an awesome 3.65 skill interactive Sierra. And not a surprise, he's a majority ground ball, medium contact pitcher, 48.7% ground ball rate, and a 55.2% medium contact rate. He does make some hitters swing and miss just a little bit. 
11.6% swinging strike rate, which is good to see. Again, he's not a massive uh, strikeout pitcher, but he can he can get there in terms of you know six innings, seven innings, about six strikeouts, but he's really going to be able to limit the damage just based on what he's doing with his pitching profile, and that's keeping the ball down, and that is keeping the ball you know, uh, in, in terms of limiting the hard contact. And, you know, he should be able to do that. Tonight's matchup against Arizona is rather interesting because Arizona, they don't strike out a whole lot uh, with their current active roster versus left-handed pitching. We look to the Diamondbacks, and they're actually really, really disciplined at the plate, which is a bit of a surprise. They come in with an 18.8% strikeout rate with their current active roster versus lefties, which is the fifth lowest in the league. Now, we have seen their offense regress a little bit compared to where it was earlier in the season. They now only come in with a 102 WRC plus versus lefties, which is 17th in the league. So they were, you know, an awesome offense earlier in the season. Now they're a good offense. They also come in with a 163 team ISO versus lefties, which is 16th in the league. So they're basically a league average offense. Yeah, they don't strike out a whole lot, but they're really not posing too much of a danger. So, yes, this isn't a big-time strikeout matchup where Justin Steele is going to go for 12 strikeouts as he did a couple starts ago. But this is a matchup, given the power from or the lack of power from Arizona, that he really should be able to do his thing, which is go, what was it, 16 straight starts now? Go a 17 straight start while allowing three earned runs or fewer. Gets that QS. Hopefully pick up the win points, which would be great to see. You know, we, we don't want to bank on those, but... 11,000 for Justin Steele, QS points, five, six strikeouts, go six or seven innings, ex- limit the damage to just the extreme, which he's been amazing at doing. He kind of pile up the fantasy points that way. So Justin Steele is absolutely awesome. Barrios, I think, is a good option tonight. Certainly not great. Uh, don't love the matchup going up against Boston. Zach Eflin is a good option. Not great. Don't love the matchup going up against Baltimore. If I had to choose between them, I'd probably go with Zach Eflin. Aaron Nola, I think we we could certainly be going to just based on his overall skill set going up against the the Cardinals. I think that's a fine spot to go. But really, Scooball here at 9.8 for the Tigers. This is the pitcher that I want to be focusing in on. Obviously, he started the year late, dealing with some injuries. He came back. He's looked really good. Now, it's not to say he's been perfect. Obviously, there's some starts here or there where he hasn't looked great. He's given up some home runs, given up some earned runs here or there. But, man, the strikeouts are what are front and center for Scooball this season. And this matchup against the Angels, I think, is one that we want to be kind of focusing in on. Obviously, the Angels still know Otani, still know Trout. This is a lineup that we should be willing to attack a 30.2% strikeout rate for Scooball this season and a 5.2% walk rate. Again, it's only 62.1 innings pitch because he is dealing with a bit of a smaller sample size. But, man, this is... Pretty darn good from him. He's also allowing 0.43 home runs per nine, 57% medium contact rate, uh, and a 53.8% ground ball rate. So really, really good stuff from him. And the strikeout upside is absolutely what we love to see. Listen, he's 9,800, which is noticeably less compared to Steele. And Scooball is up at a 30% strikeout rate compared to Justin Steele, who's at 24 and a half. So this is, uh, I think, a player that uh, a pitcher with Scooball that a lot of people will be looking to based on also the matchup. But the Angels right now with their current active roster versus lefties coming with a 23.6% strikeout rate, which is the 10th worst in the league. So it's absolutely a better strikeout matchup going up against the Angels compared to Steele going up against the the Diamondbacks. So just from a salary perspective, Scooball is rather interesting tonight and does have a good matchup going up against the Angels. Now, on the other side of that matchup is Griffin Canning for the Angels. And another bit of salary relief, he is 9,000. Griffin Canning this season comes in with a 26% strikeout rate, 6.5% walk rate. He's allowing 1.55 home runs per nine, which we don't like to see. 37%, uh, 37.7% hard contact rate is right on the edge of kind of being bad and a 37.6% fly ball rate. Also kind of right on the edge of something that we don't like to see. But, you know, this is a matchup against the Tigers, and this is something that we should be interested in. They come in with a 24.6% striker rate with their current active roster versus righties, which is tied for the fifth worst in the league. They also come in with an 85 WRC+, plus, which is 29th in the league, and a 142 team ISO, which is 28th in the league. So this is a very, very favorable matchup for Griffin Canning in terms of the lack of power from Detroit, combined with some decent strikeout upside, or I'm going to say above decent strikeout upside at 9K. 
So there are, again, a, a variety of options at pitcher that we can be going to. Steele, you know, we can make the case that between him, Eflin, and Nola are probably the best pitchers on tonight's slate. I will say, given Steele's higher salary, also combine the fact that we have Coors Field on tonight's slate and we shouldn't have any weather issues at Coors Field, you know, after last night. Just the 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 strikeout differential between Scooball, you know, pushing 31% and Steele, who again is good and he's been awesome in real life. You know, that fantasy upside really comes from strikeouts. And I think we're going to be getting that from Scooball tonight. So while I think Justin Steele is an awesome pitcher, I'm not sure if I'm going to be putting him number one. You know, we can make the case that that Eflin or Nola with their strikeout upside, who are just a little bit less expensive compared to Steele, they are maybe better options. Uh, you know, going up against uh, compared to Justin Steele, given their matchups. I think we also need to be considering Hunter Green at 8,700. And I like his matchup going up against the Mets. Hunter Green is a pitcher that has shown just tremendous strikeout upside. Uh, you know, whether it was this season, whether it was last season, he obviously missed a bunch of time this year due to an injury. He only has 91.1 innings pitched this year. But he has a 30.2% strikeout rate, which is absolutely no joke. And that's where it was last year in 2022 when he had a 30.9% strikeout rate in 125.2 innings. So this is not a fluke from him this season. This is the level we should be expect. Now, the issue for Hunter Green is that he has a 10.8% walk rate, and he's allowing 1.38 home runs per nine. That's not good. He does have a 3.92 Sierra, which is good to see, and a 46.8% fly ball rate we don't love to see. So this is kind of always been the issue for Hunter Green. When he gets those strikeouts going, he's racking them up left and right, and he's going to have you know eight strikeouts, nine strikeouts, and five innings. But there's also the downside of the walk rate getting in, him into trouble, and then a home run here, another walk, a single home run, whatever it might be. So at his salary, I absolutely love Hunter Green tonight, but I'm willing to go to him strictly in tournaments just due to the variable you know, risk, essentially, that comes from the wider range of outcomes that comes with Hunter Green. I think he's got tremendous talent, and I'll certainly look to him in some spots tonight. Again, we've course field on tonight's slate, and we want to be getting as much salary relief as we possibly can. Hunter Green is probably a pitcher that brings that. So when it comes to actually ranking the pitchers on tonight's slate, it's easy to put Justin Steele number one, and you can make the case for him. Again, you can make the case for Eflin, no law. I think it's fine to put Justin Steele if you're going to be locking in just a high level of consistency. You want to go with one lineup tonight. Steele is certainly the way to go about that. But I really, really like Scooball tonight at 9,800. And we can put him 1A, and we can put Justin Steele 1B, whatever it might be. You want to mix in some Eflin, some Nola, some shares of those pitchers if you're rolling out multiple lineups. That's great. I, I still think Griffin Canning is also in a great spot tonight. And then Hunter Green, a good, certainly going to be rolling with some shares of him at 8,700. That strikeout rate is something that we absolutely love to see. And as I mentioned, at City Field tonight, for the Mets, uh, the Reds visiting the Mets, it's a bit cooler and we have wind blowing in. So maybe that is something that will only play to the benefit of Hunter Green, who again is struggling with a few fly balls here or there, but if that wind is blowing in, could be a benefit to him tonight. So certainly liking all of that. Let's get to some stacks on tonight's slate. Again, we have course Field on tonight's slate. We do have the Dodgers on tonight's slate. They are on the road. They are taking on Seattle. It's not necessarily the easiest matchup for them, uh, for Seattle, George Kirby is certainly a solid pitcher for Seattle. So if you want to go to the Dodgers, that's certainly fine. No Braves on tonight's slate. They were playing one of the earlier 6 six thirty games, whatever it is, they're in Miami. So no Braves on tonight's slate. Dodgers on the road in Seattle. And then we have Coors Field. So absolutely go to Coors Field tonight. Uh, Logan Webb certainly a solid pitcher for the Giants. But man, Chase Anderson is not a good pitcher for Colorado. So I'll be looking up. Both sides of this matchup, obviously leaning slightly towards San Francisco just because they're just in a, a bit of an easier matchup going up against Chase Anderson. Chase Anderson. So we're starting off with Coors Field. We know all of that. Where else can we be looking outside of Coors Field? Let's start in Kansas City, where Zach Greinke is on the mound for the Royals. As I mentioned, Kansas City is actually one of the spots where it's a little bit warmer. It's going to be around 80 degrees, which is obviously very modest, but it's actually on the higher end of games tonight. We look to Zach Grinke this season, 1.78 home runs per nine allowed. He's got a 15.8% strikeout rate, which is obviously very, very low. 3.6% walk rate, I guess that's good, but you know when we're giving up that many home runs, it's really not too great. A 4.59 skill interactive ERA. 
and a 300 Babbitt, which is batting average of balls in play. Grinky is not a pitcher we need to be worried about on the mound. He's not overly, or he's not, I'm not going to say overly dominant. He's not dominant in any capacity with a lower strikeout rate. Really not making hitters swing and miss. I don't think he can necessarily pitch himself out of trouble. Um, you know, it's a little bit different if a pitcher has a 30% strikeout rate. He allows a walk or two. He can kind of shut down the next two or three hitters with that strikeout rate with his skill in the mound, which is something that Grinky doesn't necessarily have. So, yes, we want to be looking to Houston in what I'm going to say is one of the better hitting environments on tonight's side, again, due to the weather. Now, they are expensive. This is no surprise. Jose Altuve, your Don Alvarez, Kyle Tucker, Chaz McCormick, and Alex Bregman, they are all 3,500 and above. If I had to choose any of these hitters, you know, regardless of salary, I would love to get to Alvarez, Jose Altuve, and Alex Bregman. They all come in with WRC Plus is sitting at 183, 168, and 142, respectively, for those hitters. Of course, don't forget about Kyle Tucker. He's got a 126 WRC Plus and a 197 ISO. We want to be going to these players each and every time that we can. It only comes down to the salary that we have available. I don't necessarily want to be going to Michael Brantley, Jose Abreu, uh, Jeremy Pena, I would, I really want to avoid that if I can. So due to their more expensive salaries for these players, this is where Hunter Green at 8,700, Griffin Canning at 9,000, this is where they come into the mix because, you know, we need a little bit of salary relief. If you were to lock in Justin Steele into your lineup, you're immediately left with an average remaining per player of $3,000, which is tough to get to when there's multiple hitters on Houston that are 3,500 and above. So this is where that salary relief from some of those pitchers really does come into play. So Houston absolutely leading things off as an, a great spot. They also come in with a 5.43 implied run total tonight, which is fantastic. So we have a clear stack there. Stack Coors Field. I also think we should be considering the Milwaukee Brewers tonight. They are at home. They're going up against Jake Irving of Irvin of the Washington Nationals. Uh, pitcher in his first year in the major leagues. He's got a decent sample size, 113.2 innings pitched. 1.43 home runs per nine allowed. He's got an 18.7% strikeout rate, which is lower than the league average. 9.4% walk rate, which is higher than the league average. He comes with a 5.00 Sierra. 41.1% fly ball rate and a 36.5% uh, hard contact rate allowed this season. And surprise, surprise, he's not making hitters swing and miss at the plate at all. He has a 7% swing strike rate, which is extremely low. Now, when it comes to the Brewers, the only note would be uh, Christian Yelich is expected to be back in the lineup tonight. He's missed about a week at this point. That is not yet confirmed. Uh, if Yelich is not in the lineup, I don't necessarily think it's that much of an issue. Yelich is 3,400 and he's their most expensive hitter. Uh, Contreras at 32 is their next most expensive hitter. And then Adamas at 31, Santana at 3000. So if Yelich isn't in the lineup, it's actually not that bad because we still have some viable options and they're not super, super expensive. Also, Marcana at 2,700 has been dealing, I think it's a wrist thing he's dealing with. He's missed a, a game or two in a row now. So there's a few injury notes from Milwaukee. They're absolutely in a great spot. This could open some things up when it comes to value in the rest of their lineup. If Yelich plays, I absolutely want him you know, as one of the top options. But Contreras, Adamas, Santana are all great options and are really affordable at 32 31 and $3,000. So don't forget about Milwaukee tonight. They are coming with a 4.58 implied run total, which is certainly very, very solid. So I think they're kind of one of those key teams that, hey, we need a bit of salary relief. We want to pay for pitching. We want to pay for Coors Field. The Brewers kind of bring a bit of that sour relief. So as I said, like I'm not sure if it even matters if Yelich is in the lineup. Well, of course, their lineup would be better if he's in there. But in terms of the players we might want to be targeting, we might have to skip over Yelich just because we need some extra salary relief. I also think we should be considering the Texas Rangers tonight. They are just apparently on fire right now. Uh, after the sweep against the Blue Jays over was a three-game series, four-game series, whatever it was. They're going up against Lucas Giolito of the now Cleveland Guardians. He's obviously been with a, a number of different teams this season. He's just not having a good year. 1.98 home runs per nine allowed. 25.3% striker rate, which is certainly solid. It's where it's been for him really over the past few seasons. 8.6% walk rate this year for Giolito. Uh, his Babbitt is slightly below the league average at two at 273. It's certainly fine, but man, the fly balls continue to be an issue for Giolito up at 45.8%. And with a lineup 
with the Rangers and the power that they have and certainly or seemingly turning things to a new level after a bit of a slow July and August, they're a team we should absolutely be targeting tonight. Now, I did mention it is a little bit cooler in Cleveland tonight. So if you want to put Texas like a half a step behind some of these other teams due to uh, you know the weather factors and whatever it might be, that's certainly fine. But I have a lot of interest in Texas tonight just based on their potential home run upside. Mitch Garver left last night's game early. Whether he's in tonight's lineup, he's yet to be seen. Obviously, getting up to Corey Seager, Marcus Simeon, these are the two players we absolutely want to be starting things off with when it comes to the Rangers. Surprise, surprise. Uh, immense power, immense consistency from both of these players. A 201 WRC plus from Corey Seager this year, along with a 363 ISO, is absolutely unbelievable. Now, if Mitch Garver plays, we want him in our lineup with a 303 ISO in this split versus righties. Uh, we Marcus Simeon can also look to with a 210 ISO and a 125 WRC+. plus. These are all players we want to be getting into our lineups, and it ultimately comes down to the salaries that we have available because Seager is 4,400, Simeon is 4,000, Mitch Garver is 35, Nate Lowe is 31, Yona Heim could be behind the plate if Garver is out, and he's 2,900, so he's actually a player I'd be looking to pretty heavily tonight uh, just based on his salary relief and, of course, the matchup going up against Lucas Giolito. So we have some really good options for hitting tonight again, course field. I'm interested in the Texas Rangers. Certainly want to be going to uh, them tonight. Want to be going to Houston as well. I like Milwaukee for a bit of salary relief. Let's go to the home run calls to kind of close things out. Uh, the easy answer for tonight would be your Don Alvarez for the Houston Astros going up against Zach Grinke. Obviously just immense power from Alvarez in really any matchup and especially going up against Zach Grinke, who is struggling in a big way versus both lefties and righties this year, but specifically versus lefties. And then a bit of a longer shot going to Milwaukee again, and going to be going to Carlos Santana for the Brewers at $3,000 tonight. Uh, I like the power that he has. Uh, Jake Irvin is not a pitcher that I'm worried about on the mounds. I think the power is clearly there for some of the Brewers hitters tonight. All right, so that does it for today's podcast. It's always being found on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Make sure to give it a like, follow, or subscribe. You can find the video version on the FanDuel YouTube page on FanDuel TV Plus and FanDuel.com slash watch. You can follow me on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio1. Until next time, good luck in your contests.